people often talk about John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, who do we often hear that applied to? At least in popular Christianity, people often apply that to the devil. But I want us to look at the context. Now, if this were a classroom, I would actually give you five minutes or two minutes, would probably be enough, have you open your Bibles and look at it. So, if you want to, you can pause the film and look at John chapter 10, starting with verse 1, and read forward. Because the context is very important in understanding this. It's true that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but the text actually isn't talking just about the devil. It has a much wider implication in its immediate context. Just remember to come back to me after you've paused. <clears throat> John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The context of John chapter 10, especially if you go back into John chapter 9, sheds a lot of light on this. The things that we see that the text is already saying about the thief in John chapter 10, the one who, who doesn't enter by the door but comes in some other way, that's a thief. The one who's not really welcome to come. All those who came before me were thieves and robbers, Jesus says. He says that the, the thieves and the robbers, they don't have the, the sheep's best interest in mind. The, 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 the shepherd wants to preserve the sheep. The thieves and the robbers and also the wolves in John chapter 10 and verse 12, they just want to devour the sheep for themselves. They have only their own interests at heart. So Jesus is talking about false leaders the ones who would lead the sheep astray for their own interests. And in fact, in John chapter 9, we, we see how this context flows forward from there. In John chapter 9, Jesus heals a blind man. And then the blind man is intercepted by the religious leaders who say, hey, you're not supposed to be doing this on the Sabbath. And, and they end up expelling him from the synagogue. And Jesus then is addressing these religious leaders. At the end of chapter 9, he's still talking to them going on into chapter 10. There were no chapter breaks in the original. So when Jesus tells the parable of being the good shepherd, it's alluding back to what he's already told. Jesus, who defends the blind man against the Pharisees, is the good shepherd, risking his life for the sheep by confronting the wolves, the thieves, and the robbers. The, the blind man, uh, formerly blind man, Who's, who's kicked out of the synagogue uh, because of following Jesus, becomes an example of Jesus' sheep, one of Jesus' sheep. And the Pharisees who expel the man are examples of the thieves, the robbers, and the wolves. Now, this isn't specifically because they're Pharisees, but uh, back in the Old Testament also, we read about the false shepherds of Israel, religious leaders who had their own interests at heart. Uh, we read about them in Ezekiel 34, where God says, I myself will become their shepherd. I myself will shepherd my people. And so Jesus fulfills that function here as the good shepherd. And as often in the Old Testament, God's people were his sheep. This man's kicked out of the synagogue like he no longer belongs to God's people. But Jesus says, no, he's one of my sheep. He does belong to my people. Shepherds kept the shield in the, in the fold at night to protect them from predators like thieves, robbers, wolves, lions, and so forth. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice, just like, like this man recognized Jesus as, as, as true and came to follow him. Jesus speaks of recognizing his voice, um, which sheep normally did with shepherds, even to the point that he goes on in chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, comparing our relationship with him to his relationship with the Father. He's, he says, my own know me, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. That doesn't mean necessarily that we hear God perfectly. It's like Paul says, we don't yet know as we are known. But in the incarnation, Jesus has made God known perfectly. And in the cross, Jesus has made God available. And in the resurrection and by the Spirit, Jesus has made God dynamically present in our lives. We may not hear him perfectly all the time, but we do have a relationship with him that he himself has established, and that relationship is a perfect relationship. Would that we always paid attention to him. Because the thief wants to devour us. But the good shepherd, he cares for us. He died to protect us from all these predators 
false leaders who would lead us astray from him. His sheep recognize his voice. May we listen. May we hear him always. Thank you.